I'm so excited that you took the time to join us on the next episode of Beyond the Culture. This is the show where we embrace change and challenge cultural norms and ideals. I'm your host, Dr. David M. Walker. Hey, welcome to another episode of Beyond the Culture. Before we get into our conversation today, I'd like for you to do me a favor. I'd like for you to hit that subscribe button, whether on iTunes or on our YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button, and that way, each and every week that we're on, you'll get notified that a brand new episode is live and ready to share with you. Another thing I'd like for you to do is I'd like for you to share the show. That's right, share with your friends, so that way they'll know that we're on and that they they can tune into the show just as well. All right, let's get into our conversation. My guest today is Monique A.J. Smith. Monique is a leadership strategist. She guides athletics departments, sports organizations, and individuals who wish to advance in athletics administration or the marketplace. You know, Monique operates her own consulting business company. It's called Seeds of Empowerment. Monique conducts workshops for youth, women, educational, and corporate organizations. Monique has consulted on Title IX issues, NCAA compliance, and rules education, and she has served on several NCAA committees. Monique is an accomplished sports management professional. She's had a long career as an athletic conference executive for the historic Central Intercollegiate Athletic Association, otherwise known as the CIAA. Monique is an adjunct professor at Hampton University. She hosts Chat in the Garden podcast. She's an author. She also publishes the magazine Significance in Athletics and Sports. Now listen, I don't want you to go anywhere. I want you to stay tuned and let's go beyond the culture. Monique, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dr. Walker. I just want to give you maybe about 30 seconds just to say whatever you want to say about yourself. Okay. Well, I am a leadership strategist uh, that work with athletic departments and sports organizations and individuals who wish to advance in athletic administration. Uh, sports business or the marketplace. So that's my sweet spot. And I'm a leadership strategist because uh, that's how I uh, shed light of how to take their organization to the next level. So you are into uh, sports and athletics. And of course, the question is, how did you get into sports and athletics? (laughs) You know, that's, I got to start there. How did you get into sports and athletics? Well, uh, it goes all all the way back to the eighth grade. I'm from Sussex County, Virginia. Uh, My homeboy is Tony Massenburg. He played uh, 17 years in the league, but I was the scorekeeper in the eighth grade. He was in ninth grade. And um, um, since I knew about sports, the first internship that showed up on the bulletin board at Hampton University, I was communications major. Um, and actually, I, I want to say it was 87, uh, set was for 87 or 88 and, uh, CIAA PR intern. So I applied, I was one woman among three guys and I was accepted. And what did I do? I ended up doing stats, the same thing I did in high school but I got a chance to select the players of the week, coach of the week, and update stats. And so uh, communications was my major, but my, my career began in that way. I began working with um, uh, sports information at Hampton University my junior, my senior year. We hosted the national championship for track and field for Division II. Uh, and I began to see that I had the sports information bug because uh, it was promoting our student athletes um, uh, where they might not have gotten the publicity before. So my first job straight out of college was sports information director for St. Paul's College in Lawrenceville, Virginia. Ironically, uh, my first boss 
was Jeanette A. Lee. She was the first female athletic director in the CIAA. And I was the first full-time uh, woman sports information director. And uh, so I remained at St. Paul's College for eight years. In between that time, I had opportunity to work the Olympic Festival in 95 and Olympics in 96. And so while I'm working the Olympics, I get a call from the president of the college and says, uh, your uh, athletic director just resigned. I want you to be the interim athletic director. And I said, huh? Hmm. <laughs> and I didn't think I was really ready, but then the bomb went off in Atlanta at the Olympics. And I said, you know what? Life is short. I'll go ahead and take it. I'll learn on the job like my other colleagues would. Okay. And uh, so I was athletic director 28. I went off to uh, be compliance director at the University of Maryland Shore for two years. And then the commissioner said, come on back home. And I came back to be the PR director for the CIAA. I received several promotions uh, within a 13 year period and became director of championship, director of governance, and essentially chief of staff. And then in 2013, um, I was, um, I, I made a transition to be a full-time entrepreneur. Um, and with that, I became a consultant for the NCAA doing leadership workshops. And they had a change of leadership and they concentrated their money and their time on enforcement and not education and said, you can still work with the universities, but they got to pay you directly. And I was like, bet, I can charge more. So that's what I've been doing since 2013. You know, you shared a lot about your journey, uh, getting involved in athletics. Some of it seemed to be, um, I won't say by chance, but I say opportunity. You know, opportunity was presented to you and you, you took advantage of it, which everyone should. Um, would you say that since you said you got started as early as either eight years old or eighth grade, I'm not sure. The eighth, eighth grade. Eighth grade. grade. Yeah. Um, would you say that you're, you're kind of living your dream, your sports dream and the things that you do after all these years? Well, I can't say I had a sports dream. Okay. I, I, I would say, I will say this. When I saw Jane Kennedy on, I think, it, I don't, I want to say it was NBC Sports. Yeah. I yeah. said, I wanted to do what she was doing. I wanted to tell the story. So I always wanted to be in communications. I always wanted to be able to tell the story, the human interest story. So it, it just so happens that the opportunity came uh, with sports because honestly, I was a rare person. Like, oh, she can do that? Yeah. And um, I actually kind of dibbled with television. I interned at BET in promotions. Um, I, and I interned at a local TV station in promotions. And I just didn't like the cutthroatness of television. Mm -hmm. I like to be able to have time to create um, my creativity. So creating slogans, um, how to promote. Um, and you mentioned, I don't know if you did mention that I have a magazine um, where I highlight Black women in athletic administration. Mm -hmm. And that causes me naturally because I can promote, I promote the women in the magazine the same way I would a player to all conference, all American. I try to highlight the specialized knowledge. So it just promoting is my thing. So I'm living my, I'm living my dream of promoting um, and being able to uh, introduce people and their human interest stories. Like, like uh, even in my class, I teach uh, sports PR. Okay. And I had each student to go and find a human interest story about anybody in the Super Bowl. And I said, and so today when I go to class, I'm going to say, do you see how when you watch the game differently? You feel like you know the player, like you knew the storylines. Mm -hmm. So that's what I really enjoy about telling, talking about other people and getting people to feel connected. You, you, you brought up uh, the name Jane Kennedy. Mm -hmm. And I have heard on several occasions, uh, black women bring up her name for obvious reasons. One, she was a woman and two, she was a black woman and yeah. she was getting, uh, the opportunity on a national level being on, uh, NBC or whatever particular station she was on, but broadcasting sports. And then you also said that you promote 
uh, women in athletics. So it sounds like there's a there's a sense of the need for you as a woman, a black woman, to also promote the achievements of other black women. Would you would you agree with that? One thousand percent correct. Okay. Um, I had opportunity to sit in a lot of rooms um, uh, on the NCA level. Um, I attended the commissioners meetings and uh, served on a Honda Award. And uh, I was on the board of NACWA, which is now Women Leaders in College Sports. Uh, but I knew about monies that were set aside mm -hmm. for diversity. And I sat in on a meeting once and uh, a commissioner at another Division II conference uh, was discussing that she didn't have a way uh, to use her diversity money. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't hold my tongue. I'm like, no, you're not even trying. You didn't even ask me. Right. See, that's the one thing. Even from my time in the conference office or before, when there has been a desire for a minority individual, I've always been the one people come to to say, I have an opening. Who do you suggest? Or can you send a recommendation or whatever? And so I'm like, you didn't try. Now, ironically, I had just finished reading this book because I'm an avid reader. I know you can tell I've got <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I see my, it. Uh, my mother is a retired librarian. My father was an English teacher. I was only child, so books are my best friend. But I was ironic. I was reading this nonfiction book about Blacks in um, odd, I want to say odd places, but, but it was like in New England. There was a chapter about Blacks in New England. And uh, I had just finished reading that. It was like so ironic. And this person was in the uh, New England area and it talked about, um, you know, the black church Okay. and, you know, all et cetera. I said, now, if you really were really trying, you would have sought a way to solicit from the black church if you were really trying to use your dollars. Because I'm sure there was somebody interested uh, to work in your conference office or you could create a program, you know, or black history. I'm like, you didn't even try. And so that told me, see, the problem is, again, this is a, a commissioner who has power, mm. who's not even interested in it. So I'm like, okay. And then, honestly, every time there was an opening, it would be the same Black people. I said, well, let me shed a light on everybody that I know. And, that's, and I have been on the podcast for eight seasons. Okay. Wow. So, so... In the conversation you just had, I'm sorry, or what you were just saying is about uh, diversity dollars and someone not being able to to use it for their advantage. Um, and of course, again, on the subject of the conversation of, of, of race and women and, you know, women are getting more of an opportunity, maybe not to the level that they want and or, I, and, need. or need. Absolutely. Um, what would you suggest for women? What would be the best advice that you would give for women if you're trying to advance in, you know, the athletic field or any field? What would your recommendation be for them in order to do to get promoted to the next level? Well, I would say first to get in the business is to volunteer. Okay. That, that would be the first thing. Um, and I'm still of the school of thought that volunteerism is just that you're not looking for dollars you're looking for experience okay then not everybody's not on the same page with that but that's what I, because again i believe like internships or volunteering you can see what you like and what you don't like like i said both my internships were in television and i did like it and so when i did sports formation i was still volunteering okay and uh i was like oh I, I see this you know and uh, then, then you see a creation. I came with, with uh, Hampton University at that time, wanted to do something about, um, I forgot, was something about, they needed a hot air balloon. And nobody knew how to go get one. And I, back then, I took the telephone book and I looked up NASA and I said, where can we get a hot air balloon? And they were like, oh, she did that. I'm like, okay, what well, that do we just ask the question. So the second thing is be the answer, you know, be, be a solution provider. 
um, look to see what is needed and what you can and how you can be that be the answer to that. That would that would be on any level, would mean the entry level, mid level. Um, and, and, and actually, I do have a person who's giving me to be in the magazine this time. And I said, you know, I'm looking for your expert knowledge. Mm -hmm. What did you do to solve a problem that becomes your intellectual property that you can be able to express even on a piece of media, um, in a, a job interview, or even in a job review? And so being able to tell your story to control your narrative, uh, but you got to first get in there first. But right. with LinkedIn and whatnot, even our young people with internships can tell the story of what they've done. And that will allow them to um, grab some traction. You know, when it comes to hiring, I'm going to, again, we, we were talking about, you know, women in, in athletics and sports. Um, you know, I, I'm a former NCAA, uh, college basketball referee. So I'm always partial to anything related to officiating. I know in the NBA, there are more women officials. Uh, they've increased it to about five in the NFL. There are more, uh, NFL, at least two women now that are officiating NFL games. And so I, I want to bring this up even though that's not any, it, it's a leadership position, but I want to get it to talking about the top, the top being like administrators and leaders, because, um, you know, we just came off the conversation about black men not being allowed, not uh, getting NFL uh, uh, coaching, head coaching positions. And, um, and it's just, it's just, it's just a shame that you can have 32 teams and only have one or two. It's up to about two now. That's 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 a actual head coach. There are no African American owners in in NFL. Um, I want to kind of move this 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 cop this question to the fact that black men in that division in that league has had problems with getting to the top, and I think because a lot of times it comes down to owners are not comfortable with them being at the top and representing them. Cause you can't tell me they're not qualified. They have the qualification, but why aren't they getting the jobs? And I find sometimes the difference comes when they go for that interview and they're in the room because statistics may be equal between one coach, one applicant and another, but when they go into the room and they're having those conversations with owners or the ones that's during the hiring, Somehow or another, black men have fallen short in those particular fields. So I just want to ask for, for African-American women being top administrators and top level executives, do you think they also are experiencing the same type of response, uh, being black, being a woman, that there's some underlining uh, feeling that they can't lead as athletic directors or even presidents of universities. What do you think about that? Well, um, I had an opportunity. I just came back from, um, I came back from LA. I okay. went to the um, Power Sports Brunch that's put on with the Super Bowl every year and it acknowledges women in, in this area. And uh, it's fantastic, I love okay. it. It's my second time attending. I saw Jennifer King there, who is um, the running back, assistant running back coach for the Washington um, Commanders. I Commanders, believe. yeah, that's yeah. their name now. <laughs> and uh, and so she actually spoke to my class uh, last spring. And um, and so since I know her story, I will use that, that as an example. Um, the, the NFL has been very intentional about increasing the number of women in this area. Okay. And, and what has been made the difference is you talk about being in the room, being in the room with somebody before you need to hire. Right. Because people are going to hire people that they know or been impressed with. And so that's why, again, human interest stories come into play. You know, you can read something and feel like you know them. And so that's what needs to happen on the men's side 
um, you know, and, and, it, it, and from an HBC standpoint, they're doing a lot with bringing HBCU coaches in. Um, uh, it, 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 excuse me, it's interesting because they're concentrated on the offense. There's something about uh, Black men and offense. They usually think of Black men being defensive, on the defensive end. So again, I teach psychosociology of sports, so I don't want to go too deep into the thought process. Right. But, um, you know, Jennifer King got hired. Here's the interesting thing. Uh, she was a Division three um, champion as a women's basketball coach. Okay. So she was already a champion. Mm -hmm. She was already playing uh, women's tackle football at quarterback. And she was already in the building, at the same building that the Panthers practice in preseason, but she never met the football coach. She goes to the NFL's uh, in a women's combine, and then she meets the coach who she shares a building with. Mm. At the time, you, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, the Charlotte Panthers, that's yeah. where it was. Uh -huh. So... He got a chance to meet her there and said, okay, when you get back, you know, let's connect. So you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that, that, and they were sitting at a table and just talking. So that's the beauty of it. And then when he gets the opportunity to go, I mean, this is the think about it. You know, him being a hire for the Washington Commodores has a, was, what was the best thing for that team as it relates to let us attack our faults mm. in the area of diversity you know and you know since the time he she met him she made some other kind of she moves she you know did some football college moves but the, the thing is he knew her beforehand right he had some kind of connection and a social set before it's time to come for an interview people will hire who they know yes yes and I and I agree with that wholeheartedly, um, and and sometimes, based on the hire, and I can't I can't you know let's put an exclamation point right where you just said people hire who they know, and what you have just made clear is more African American men and women got to get into the room more. You got to get around more uh, because your statistics, while they are excellent, your accomplishments are excellent. But how well do people know you? You know what I'm saying? That's why I did this magazine. Yeah. What's your expert knowledge? What do you people need to, when they're looking for so-and-so, you should be the first thing that comes to mind. Right. And so, you know, it, it, you know, people, again, the day of just doing a great job with your head down, are over. Right, right. It's over. Let me ask you this. If somebody needs to know who that is, get their head down. <laughs> Your head is down. Can't nobody see who you are. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, that's just so excellent. That's some excellent advice that you just now shared. Let me ask you, what what is what you do? What do you like most about what you do? Seeing others. I, I, I My motto is planting seeds of empowerment to lead others to greatness. So I love working with clients and seeing them uh, advance. Um, and get their name out there. Uh, it, there's a people, a couple of people in the magazine. Um, the magazine is called Significance in Athletics and Sports. It is on Amazon. Um, the third issue is being uh, produced now, and I'm taking individuals to be in the fourth. And I've had people uh, become athletic directors since being on there. I've had two to receive national awards. Uh, one young lady now works for the Washington Wizards. Mm -hmm. uh, Mystics, the Mystics. Okay, the, M yeah, the WNBA. Mystics, uh, is yeah. a is an account executive. Um, and then, you know, they always come. I had one young lady. I also used to do retreats. I had one young lady who was in sports, but she went to go work for the Girl Scouts. And since then, coming to my retreat, she is sore. Had another young lady who's been in my retreats and in the magazine. She's a three-time AD of the year, high school out in Georgia. So just seeing, because again, 
getting your information out there also builds your confidence. And so you can, it's, it's like you, your engine is moving on its own. You don't need me in your ear anymore. You know, absolutely. And, you know, it's clear that um, the things that you have shared um, has been quite helpful. But let me ask you this question. What is something that you've done and you've helped somebody, but it was like an unexpected surprise for you that, you know, it turned out that way? That happens all the time. <laughs> okay. I didn't it's expect that. I mean, it's like really planting the seed and you're not really sure what's going to bloom. That's why I call my, my, everything is about growth for me. Right, right. And, and you don't, you really don't have control of the growth, especially when you're even a teacher. You know, you're planting a seed and you're really hoping that they, they take heed and they, they bloom in their own garden, you know, and then they reproduce that. And so, um, you know, even the Bible says, you know, the person, one person plants, another person waters. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, I definitely don't take credit for all of it. Like I said, I just plant the seed. I give you the possibilities of what you could be. And so I, I really believe that, um, oh, just so many young people. Uh, another young lady that was recent, she was trying, she was in the high school space. She was doing a, a little entrepreneur piece. Uh, but when I would talk to her, and I'll be honest with you, uh, Dr. Walker, I do a lot of mindset work first okay. before I do any skill work. Because, uh, I mean, it, it, when you're marginalized, you start taking on some of the things you think people are saying about you. And so you can't advance because you got a chip on your shoulder and or, or you do a lot of negative self-talk to yourself. Mm -hmm. And so I got to kind of scrape that off so that you can be able to see possibility because when you hear a feedback, how you respond to the feedback has a lot to do with your advancement. And so that's what I do a lot. Of. So I have I have seen faces light up, eyes light up, like, okay, I can do this. And, uh, you know, like the young lady just went to work for the Wizards, you know. I think I worked with her for a year. And uh, they all say that when they work with me, their perspective has changed. Uh, lady, I, 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 when I went to LA, th th this was a surprise. She was a mental health, a practitioner. She had her own business. Mm -hmm. And so she asked me, you might have met it to Angela, Dr. Angela Burtis. She spoke at the uh, Black Student Athlete Summit as well. Okay. And she asked me to speak with her on a panel um, at the Black Student Athlete Summit. She said they had, they had very few Black women. Would you come join me? I said, sure. So everywhere I go, I try to have connecting events with people of my listeners. So we go to uh, uh, breakfast. There's another person that's in my academy. She says, uh, we're looking for, most schools at this time were just creating a mental health piece. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for one. We opened it back up because we didn't find a good fit. And I said, you know, would you, would you uh, make some suggestions? This was in January. I get a call in April. Oh, I just wanted you to know that I'm moving my family from Atlanta and I'm closing my business or I'm putting a pause and I'm going to become the director of uh, um, sports, mental health. And it was at Mississippi State okay. University. So then we fast forward. She now works for the United States Olympic Committee at another place to have just started a new position. And so she picked me up from the airport in LA. So the thing is, again, talking about unexpected, I, all I was trying to do was I said, look, people can't hire um, sports psychologists or psychiatrists. I need you to start doing some contracts. I got a couple of schools that's looking for someone. Give me a contract. She just told me this last week, you made me see things in myself I did not even see. Wow. 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 That's why I say seeds of empowerment. That's all I say. I just plant seeds of empowerment. Seeds of empowerment. I help you see possibilities, see things differently. You know, they say change your mind, change your future. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're doing when you when you emphasize, uh, you know, mindset. Um, you know, on our show, it's called Beyond the Culture. 
and it's the it's the place where we embrace change and challenge mm -hmm. cultural norms and ideals. So I always love talking about, uh, as, as I said, embracing change and then challenging traditions and norms. So I want to ask you, um, uh, with what you do, what, you know, what would you change? What would you, if you could change it, what would you change about your field? Mm -hmm. Yeah, anything in your field that you, that you, uh, and then you've embraced it. You've, or, or, or let me put it this way. You've embraced the fact that something should change and something should be different. What have you embraced in terms of change? Well, what I see right now, even in my class, I have a class and one of my classes, I have 31 people. There are about four to five women in that class. Okay. Almost all my classes, there are very few women. And um, again, I've been, since 1990, even before 1990, I've been in the business. And, uh, you know, being a first has its own pressures. Yes. And, and that's one of the reasons why I wrote a chapter in the book, um, um, Changing the Face. My, my chapter is called Public Figure Mask. Okay. And uh, if anybody wants, you can go to publicfiguremask.com to hear about my athletic administrative journey. Um, but the thing is, the pressure of it, of being a first and being an only, uh, I'm trying to get women to see, to embrace. We're talking about student athletes and their mental health. You've got to be able to embrace and see that the pressure for the high achiever is different. And because I've traveled this road, I can see it. And I've been able to help women. You know, um, I had a young lady that, that came to me and wanted to be athletic director. She became athletic director, but everything with the conversation was she felt like she was an attack. So then I gave her some tools about that. And the tools are in my chapter. And then she said, when she read the chapter and she realized that I went to therapy, she went to therapy and she began to see things differently. Mm -hmm. You can't want this seat. You can't have a want the leadership opportunity without understanding all that comes with it. And this is where I do mindset work. So that's, that's one of the things that I want to change. The other is um, for, for young girls to be able to uh, look at this a viable position and not just to be athletic trainer or to be a coach, but to be a sports information director, uh, be a academic advisor, you know, all of these roles, hey, director of facilities. I got one girl in one in the magazines, she's director of equipment. She designed the football uniform. So that's why I did the magazine twofold to introduce to all the professions that are out there for black women and to promote the women that are doing the piece. So it was twofold. And so I really tried to sell the magazine in bulk so mm -hmm. it can put it in the hands of the next generation. You spoke about your book. I want to talk about your podcast. Okay, cool. You, you have a podcast titled a chat in the garden with Monique AJ Smith, where women in higher ed, spe specifically athletic administration, are spotlighted. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about the podcast and how's it going for you? It's going. It's been eight seasons. Wow. It's a beautiful thing. I'm booked till November now. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and when I travel, um, like I said, the luncheon, the young lady said, oh, you're the lady from Chad in the Garden. I gave you questions for one of the shows and she was a uh, intern for the NFL experience. And so by taking a picture with her and posting it on LinkedIn and in the private Facebook group that we have. So the private Facebook group, we have 2,300 people in it. So it's the networking. Um, it's the empowering of seeing other people um, advance and say, I can do it too. Again, it's growth. That's why it's called a garden. It's called chat in the garden because, you know, you can see somebody else blooming, then it becomes contagious. And mm -hmm. so um, 
it's just a beautiful thing. I, again, I did not plan it. I just fell into my lap. I have a publicist who said that uh, there was a network going on called Survival Radio Network, and they were looking for people to be guests. And I said, as long as I have control over my content and how I want it to be and my guests, I will do that. And that was eight years ago. That was with Clark Garrison. Uh, he has since passed. So now I have created my own um, blog talk radio piece in there that I have, and I have an own engineer. So season one through five uh, can be listened to um, with 200 plus dot expert. So that's season one through five, 200 plus dot expert. And to listen to um, season six through eight, you can go chatinthegarden.com, chatinthegarden.com. And I've had some fabulous, because I've had uh, Lachana Robinson. Uh, I think that she is with ESPN. Um, I've had um, almost every Black female AD, Division One, Two, Three, Junior College and High School. Um, I recently had the, NF, the NHL um, mm -hmm. executive. Um, I've had Parks and Rec. Again, just trying to showcase all that is out there. This week, I will have um, Texas Tech Senior Associate Athletic Director. So again, uh, just trying to make sure I can highlight. I've been doing a lot of researchers too. Uh, it's interesting, I had a young lady that uh, researches um, climate in sports. And so because I had her planting seed in my head, I heard about, we're doing the Olympics right now, that the Olympics is using fake snow <laughs> and it harms the environment. Again, what? I wouldn't have known that or paid attention to it if I did not have that person uh, in my realm. Wow. Um, you know, as you say that, there was a scene that I saw with someone coming down a slope and it did look like, you know, the rest of the town wasn't like that. And I said, interesting. So it's fake snow. <laughs> so I, I, my eyes were not deceiving me in what I saw. No, they were not. <laughs> well, Monique, listen, uh, we're closing, uh, bringing this conversation to a close. And it's been an outstanding conversation uh, thus far. I want to close one. I just would like you to close with something uh, motivational, inspirational that you just want to say to someone, uh, a woman who's trying to achieve and succeed. I love the analogy where you talk about growing in the garden, being planted and growing. Just if you could just offer uh, just one word of inspiration. One word of inspiration. Um. Be kind to yourself. I think, I think uh, high achieving women, we we put a lot of pressure on ourselves, and I've had to really realize this is the part that this that's, that's eye opening. You know, when we talk about me planting the seeds and and other people, you know, may water, but we do know who really has control over who blooms and who doesn't. Mm -hmm. And when you realize that you can't, I mean, I, I, this has been me, you're trying to figure it out. You're just trying to figure it out. And so what I've been trying to do of late is be present and um, let nature teach me. And uh, I, I did write a blog for this month for the Boss Network um, and I call it the Victory Circle and I, and I talk about, I was on my way to do a workshop at Delaware Interscholastic Athletic Association. And I was, I, I used the book Gung Ho. I use a lot of business books to teach. And I, I was, I was, I know what I was about to talk about. And I was about to talk about um, the spirit of the geese and they, they, they travel in a V formation. And so interesting, as I'm driving from the hotel to the location for it, I look up and there's several flocks of geese flying in V formation. But it just so happens that when I look in the back of it, it's not a perfect V. 
it's not a pro I mean, there's clusters and the other ones are trying to end up, you know, again, they always find a V and the ones in the front, you know, when it's time to to make that move, they say, hey, now it's time for someone else to lead. I'm, I'm dropping back. Everybody else is honking to to for encouragement, which becomes contagious. And then the ones in the back, they can be able to come on based on the wind that's coming, you know, pushing up. But so I, I wrote something. And, and again, I was doing a staff retreat because that's usually what I, I'm hired to do is work with individuals mm -hmm. and staff that change their perspective. And so you can still travel in an imperfect V. Wow. And you can still get you to the victory circle. So same as I teach a whole staff, I teach individuals, you can travel this life in an imperfect V and still be in the victory circle. Wow. The V may be imperfect, but you can still arrive to your destiny. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Monique, listen, how can this audience get in touch with you? Just give all us, give us your, all of your information. Well, I really like to connect on LinkedIn. That's okay. where I like to begin a conversation. So you can find me on LinkedIn at Monique A.J. Smith. Um, and uh, a lot of my, um, my magazine, I got t-shirts and that kind of good stuff. I have a store, payhip dot com backslash seeds of empowerment and uh again uh the magazine is behind me right here you can find on amazon as well um and uh the podcast can be found on chatnagarden.com and the book can be found at public figure mask.com monique i want to thank you for being my special guest on the show today um, you've inspired us today. I don't, I don't know how anyone could listen to this, uh, broadcast this podcast and not be inspired to move to the next level, to go higher. And you told us to bloom where you're planted. And I think that that's a powerful message in and of itself. So Monique, as I say to all of my guests, you've gone beyond the culture and I want to thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much, Dr. Warden. All right, you take care. Now, if you want to continue to hear inspiring interviews like the one you heard today, I want you to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or your favorite streaming platform. Also, rate the show and please leave a comment. I would also love it if you would share this podcast with your friends to let them know that we're on. Finally, you can email me at beyondtheculturepodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. This is your host, Dr. David M. Walker, and we'll talk again on Beyond the Culture. Take care.